so brain once again we are going to learn about some other aspects of human brain so protection of brain meninges cerebrospinal fluid and formation of cerebrospinal fluid and its function then blood brain barrier and its function so let's learn about the protection of brain the brain is a delicate and vital organ that is responsible for controlling all bodily functions thoughts emotions and behaviors it is protected by several layers of specialized structures and mechanisms designed designated to shield it from harm here are the primary means by which the brain is protected skull the brain is housed within a skull which is a rigid bony structure that provides a sturdy physical barrier the skull acts as a protective shell shielding the brain from direct external impacts and reducing the risk of injury and when in this the brain is further protected by a set of three membranes called the meninges these membranes surround the brain and spinal cord providing a cushioning effect and helping to absorb shock the three layers of meninges are the dura mater arachnoid mater and pia mater dura mater outer layer arachnoid mater middle layer and pia mater inner layer function primarily to protect and support the cns it connects the brain and spinal cord to the skull and spinal canal the meninges forms a protective barrier that safeguards the sensitive organs of cns against trauma another important function is that it produces cerebrospinal fluid cerebrospinal fluid the entire cerebral cavity enclosing the brain and spinal cord has a capacity of about 1600 to 1700 ml about 150 ml of this capacity is occupied by cerebrospinal fluid and the remainder of by the brain and the cord this fluid is shown as shown as present in the ventricles of the brain and the cisternes around the outside of the brain and in the subarachnoid space around both the brain and the spinal cord here we could see a picture which depicts this lateral ventricles are there foramen of munro third ventricle aqueduct of sylvius foramen of lisca then arachnoid villi then coronoid 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 plexus i'm sorry coronoid plexus tendorium cerebelli then fourth ventricle foramen of megendi then formation of csf csf is formed at a rate of about 500 ml each day which is three to four times as much as the total volume of fluid in the entire cerebrospinal fluid fluid system about two thirds or more of this fluid originates as secretion from the coroid plexus in the four ventricles many in the mainly in the two lateral ventricles additional small amounts of fluid are secreted by the ependymal surface of all ventricles and by the arachnoid membranes cfs is found in the coroid plexus by both filtration and active transport the main channels of fluid flow are lateral ventricles third ventricle aqueduct of sylvius fourth ventricle two lateral foramina of lisca and midline foramen of magendi then cisterna magna once again lateral ventricles third ventricle aqueduct of sylvius fourth ventricle two lateral foramina of lisca and the midline foramen of magendi then cisterna magna then functions a major function is to cushion the brain within its solid vault against sudden movements or impacts reducing the risk of damage the brain and the csf have about the same specific gravity so the brain simply floats in the fluid it also serves to circulate nutrients to move waste products and regulate the brain's internal environment csf provides hydromechanical protection of the neuro axis through two mechanisms csf acts as a shock absorber cushioning the brain against the skull csf allows the brain and spinal cord to become buoyant reducing the effective weight of the brain from its normal 1900 g to a much lesser 50 g so blood brain barrier the brain is protected by a specialized barrier called the blood brain barrier this barrier is formed by tightly packed cells lining the blood vessels in the brain the blood vessels that vascularize the central nervous system possess unique properties termed the blood brain barrier it is formed by microvascular endothelial cells lining the cerebral cerebral capillaries penetrating the brain and spinal cord of most mammals and other organisms with a well developed cns it is considered the largest interface for blood brain exchange
then functions the blood brain barrier is playing a critical role in controlling the influx and efflux of biological substances essential for the brain's metabolic activity as well as neuronal function the functional and structural integrity of the brain blood brain barrier is pivotal to maintain the homeostasis of the brain microenvironment the blood brain barrier is playing a critical role in protecting the brain's parenchyma from blood borne agents it acts as a filter allowing only essential substances like oxygen glucose and certain nutrients to pass from the blood stream into the brain while preventing the entry of potentially harmful substances toxins and pathogens maintain ionic homeostasis and brain nutrition regulate levels of neurotransmitters protect the brain against the neurotoxins limit plasma macromolecules leak into the brain 30% of tumors in the brain are metastatic lesions produced by cancers such as lung breast and melanoma the phenomenon surprisingly happen even though the brain is highly impermeable to cancer cells and prevents their entry into cns the partial disruption of the brain barrier could be an explanation for this certain chemotherapeutic agents can inhibit the growth of tumor cells outside the cns while they are incapable of affecting the cells inside the brain so lockman et al showed that the bbb means to be bb in sense blood brain barrier i will be shortly calling it as bbb okay it remains partially intact in an experimental brain metastasis and thus impaired drug delivery required a need for brain permeable molecular therapeutics blood cerebrospinal fluid and blood brain barriers many large molecular substances hardly pass at all from the brain from the blood into the csf or into the interstitial fluids of the brain even though the same substances pass readily into usual interstitial interstitial fluids of the body therefore it is said that barriers called the blood cerebrospinal fluid therefore it is said that barriers called the blood cerebrospinal fluid and the blood brain barrier exists between the blood and the cerebrospinal fluid and brain fluid the blood brain barrier has specific carrier molecules that facilitate transport of hormones such as leptin from the blood into the hypothalamus where they bind to specific receptors that control other functions such as appetite and sympathetic nerve system activity then some other aspects in general the blood cerebrospinal fluid and the blood brain barrier are highly permeable to water carbon dioxide oxygen and most lipid soluble substances such as alcohol and anesthetics slightly permeable to electrolytes such as sodium chloride and potassium and almost totally impermeable to plasma proteins and most non lipid soluble large organic molecules therefore the blood csf and blood brain barriers often make it possible to achieve effective concentrations of therapeutic drugs such as protein antibodies and non lipid soluble drugs in the cerebrospinal fluid or parenchyma of the brain next is about brain structure and function so this one is a quite big ppt so i will be you know reading a bit first if the human brain were so simple that we could understand it it would be so simple that we couldn't outline start with a mechanistic view functions evolution structure and behavior the neuron generalization how does a signal get started action potential how does a signal go synapses what does the signal do reflexes of a model and brain organizing principles and functions evolution earlier nothing was there then nerve net formed along with that segmented then cephalization and organizing principle then brain mind correlation not always obvious then kinesis taxis and reflexes species comparisons here you could see how brain developed then brain structure frontal lobe is there central fissure parietal lobe lateral fissure temporal lobe and occipital lobe along with cerebellum then brain structure once again cerebral cortex thalamus region mid brain corpus callosum optic nerve pituitary gland hypothalamus pons cerebellum and medulla organization of the nervous system 
nervous system, peripheral nervous system and central nervous system. Peripheral nervous system, passive to somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system. Then central nervous system, brain and spinal cord. Autonomic nervous system in the sense, sympathetic system and parasympathetic system. Then brain structure, midline. Here you could see cerebrum is there, pineal gland, cerebellum, foramen magnum, spinal cord, brain stem, medulla oblongata, pons, midbrain, pituitary gland, infundibulum, then hypothalamus and thalamus. They together constitute the diencephalon. Structure, central core, pons, reticular, foramen, medulla and cerebellum. Structure X-ray view, here you could see, cingulate cortex, fornix, fornix is there, thalamus, hypothalamus, then amygdala, hippocampus and mammillary body. This is a picture, mental picture of yourself, like various portions are there, this is just for just to get your curiosity, this regions of the brain, for example, when we enlarge this picture, this portion in the top represents dignity, caution, um, hope, faith. Sexuality, parental love, many aspects of our brain. This is a psychograph. Through the study of your psychograph record in conjunction with the vocational chart and the mental head, you can explore your mind and discover your mental self. There is much power for success, health, wealth and happiness in more people. This is slumbering tear down the world web of your Think of facilities and you can master your life into its full greatness. Let's get acquainted, you and your brain. You will find that all these years you were actually a stranger to yourself, unfamiliar with most of the power, voice and charm of your true personality. Then make a mental picture of yourself, fill in your Rating in each faculty facility in the above head. Example, take the fac facility on your psychograph record individually. Write the three in individual sections of your above head. Fill any section with your ratings, then study the head. It's a mental picture of you. Observe each part which part of the head you are strongest in and determine in which manner what group of facilities control your life the most. Then study those facilities on your psychograph record disorders of planning and social cognition caused by damage to prefrontal area disrupts executive control processes that allow us to direct and regulate our own cognitive activities setting um, setting priorities planning strategizing ignoring distractions etc then aplexias difficulty in carrying out purposeful movements without the loss of muscle strength or coordination disconnection between primary and non-primary motor areas able to carry out each part of a complex movement but disruption lies in coordination of the movement then agnosias agnosias and aplexias visual agnosia disturbances and recognizing visual stimuli despite the ability to see and describe them then prosopagnosia inability to recognize faces fusiform face area then neglect syndrome complete inattentiveness to stimuli on one side of the body then prosopagnosia as, as akinetopsia inability to perceive new movement i see the world in snapshots like frames of a movie but most of the frames are missing that is happening 
Akinetopsia. Then aphasia, Broca's aphasia. Disturbances in speech production caused by damaged Broca's area. Then anomia, difficulty with articulation. Then agrammatism. And vernix aphasia, disturbances in speech comprehension caused by damage to vernix area. Disruption and recognition of spoken words, disruption and comprehension of the meaning of words, inability to convert thought into words. Aphasia, Broca's area and vernix area. The embalmed brain of Broca's aphasic patient tan. The area of damage on the lower side of the left frontal lobe is C. Localization of function. Different regions of the brain serve specialized functions, sensory information, motor control, planning and social cognition, perception, language. Connectivity. Congenital prosopagnosis show typical bold activation to faces but severe behavioral deficit in face processing. DTI show Degradation of tracts connecting posterior and anterior regions engaged in face processing. Autism, neurodevelopmental disorder marked by social and communicative deficits and presence of repetitive behaviors under connectivity theory. Autism phenotype comes from reduction in global connectivity, long distance connections between frontal and parietal and occipital regions and increase in local connectivity particularly in visual areas an association cortex regions not receiving direct sensory input involved in perception language social and executive functioning so comparison of human and macaque monkey brain show that major areas of cortical expansion occur in association areas In cerebral cortex, most projection areas have contralateral organization. Left hemisphere receives information from right side of body, sensory or controls right side of body. And right hemisphere receives information from left side of body, sensory or controls left side of body. Split brain, corpus callosum is there. Then left visceral field, right visual field. Optic chiasma, optic nerve. General geniculate nucleus and superior colliculus and primary visual cortex. These are regions. And we try to learn about split brain. Left hand, left visual field, right visual field, fixation point, right hand. Then olfaction, left nostril, olfactory, right nostril. Speech writing, main language center, calculation, social construction, and non verbal ideation, left visual field, olfaction, right nostril, right visual field, several cop um, severe corpus callosum, left visual field, etc. can be seen. And split brain, key and ring. Split brain patients, speech, ring, key, left hand. In the left hand, there's a key, which is, you know, stored in the right portion of the brain. That is split brain patient. Experiencing, he is experiencing split brain difficulty. Then, phantom limb pain. Amputees often feel pain in limb after it has been removed. Then sensation in limb can be felt when touching other areas of body. Most common lost hand feels touch of face. The neural remapping is done. As here we could see a picture of homunculus, genital, toe, foot, leg, knee, hip, trunk. Then arm, hand, fingers, thumb, eye, nose, face, lungs, gums, teeth, jaw and tongue. Somatosensory primary projection area. 
ഓഡിറ്ററി പ്രൈമറി പ്രൊജക്ഷൻ ഏരിയ വിഷ്വൽ പ്രൈമറി പ്രൊജക്ഷൻ ഏരിയ പ്ലാസ്റ്റിസിറ്റി ദ ബ്രെയിൻ ആസ് പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് സബ്ജെക്ട് ടു അൾട്രേഷൻസ് ഇൻ ദ വേ ഇറ്റ് ഫങ്ഷൻസ് ജസ്റ്റ് ചേഞ്ചസ് ഇൻ ദ ബ്രെയിൻസ് ഓവറാൾ ആർക്കിടെക്ചർ ദ സെൻട്രൽ നർവസ് സിസ്റ്റം ക്യാൻ ഗ്രോ ന്യൂ ന്യൂറോൺസ് ബട്ട് അപ്പിയേഴ്സ് അനേബിൾ ടു ഡൂ സോ വിത്ത് കോട്ടിക്കൽ ഇഞ്ചുറി ദിസ് പ്രൊമോട്ട് സ്റ്റെബിലിറ്റി ഇൻ ദി ബ്രെയിൻസ് കണക്ഷൻസ് ബട്ട് ഇസ് എൻ ഒബ്സ്റ്റക്കൾ ടു റിക്കവറി ഫ്രം ബ്രെയിൻ ഡാമേജ് ന്യൂറോൺസ് ആർ സബ്ജെക്ട് ടു അൾട്രേഷൻ ഇൻ ദ വേ ദി ഫങ്ഷൻസ് ജസ്റ്റ് ചേഞ്ച് ഇൻ ഹൗ much neurotransmitter a presynaptic neuron release changes in neuron sensitivity to neurotransmitters creating new connections by growing new dendritic spines then principles and functions cephalization all or none low frequency coding of intensity doctrine of specific nerve entities localization of function plus integration topographic projection and distortion split brain crossed connections connectivity and functional connectivity neuroplasticity and reorganization evolution of the brain once again reptilian paleo mammalian and neo mammalian motor areas and stereas association areas can be seen in the brain the brain brain stem responsible for automatic survival functions medulla controls heartbeat and breathing the thalamus is there reticula for amen then uh, medulla and parts of the brain thalamus relays messages cerebellum coordination and balance cerebral cortex is there corpus callosum amygdala hippocampus pituitary thalamus pons medulla midbrain hypothalamus brain stem heart rate and breathing then reticular formation white spread connections arousal of the brain as a whole reticular activating system or ras maintains consciousness and alertness functions in sleep and arousal from sleep so radiations to cerebral cortex visual impulses reticular formation and ascending general sensory tracts touch pain temperature and auditory impulses descending motor projections to spinal cord then the cerebellum helps coordinate voluntary movement and balance then cerebellum and spinal cord in the limbic system hypothalamus pituitary amygdala and hippocampus all deal with basic drives emotions and memory and hippocampus memory processing amygdala aggression fly, fight and flight hypothalamus hunger thirst body temperature pressure regulates pituitary gland hormones etc hypothalamus is there pituitary gland is there then amygdala is also there along with hippocampus <laughs> next is about limbic system hypothalamus pituitary amygdala and hippocampus all deal with basic drives emotions and memory hippocampus deal with memory processing amygdala deal with aggression fight and fear or flight response then hypothalamus hunger thirst body temperature pressure regulates pituitary gland hormone regulation so hypothalamus is there pituitary gland could be seen amygdala is there and portions called the hippocampus is also present and the limbic system hypothalamus the neural structure laying below below in the sense hypo the thalamus directs several maintenance activities then eating drinking body temperature helps govern the endocrine system via the pituitary gland linked to more emotion and show so helps govern the endocrine system via the pituitary gland linked to emotion the limbic system the limbic system amygdala two almond shaped neural clusters that are components of the limbic system and are linked the charles wickman brain thalamus the brain sensory switchboard charles wickman was a murderer mass murderer but 
later it was found out that his amygdala portion contains some tumors so amygdala is a portion which is you know related with emotions so that portion is you know under um experiencing some tumor or some injury so that's why uh, that's one of the reasons he is you know brutally killed many people i'm not trying to justify him but that is a cause that might be a cause then the brain the lamus the brain sensory switchboard located on top of the brain stem it directs messages to the sensory receiving areas in the cortex and transmits replies to the cerebellum and medulla the cerebral cortex cerebral cortex the body's ultimate control and information processing center frontal lobe parietal lobe occipital lobe and temporal lobe once again we are going to learn these portions then the lobes of the cerebral hemisphere frontal lobe central sulcus then the lobes of the cerebral hemisphere frontal lobe central sulcus parietal lobe parietal occipital sulcus occipital lobe pre occipital notch temporal lobe and some other aspects of cerebral cortex frontal lobe is involved in speaking and muscle movement and in making plans and judgments the executive portion then parietal lobe include the sensory cortex frontal lobe parietal lobe occipital then the cerebral cortex occipital lobes includes the visual areas which receive visual information from the opposite visual field temporal lobes include the auditory areas each of which receive auditory information primarily from the opposite ear then the cerebral cortex frontal lobe occipital lobe parietal lobe temporal lobe etc are there frontal forehead to top motor cortex parietal top to rear sensory cortex occipital back and visual cortex temporal above ears auditory cortex is also there and the motor sensory cortex contralateral homunculus and equal representation this is the homunculus little man this is sensory areas earlier we mentioned about homunculus this is a representation of all the somatic sensory cortex and various sensory processes of body then the cerebral cortex aphasia impairment of language usually caused by left hemisphere damage either to broca's area impairing speaking or to wernick area impairing understanding and broca's area an area of the left frontal lobe that directs send the impairment of language usually caused by left hemisphere damage either to broca's area impairing speaking or to wernick area impairing understanding broca's area an area of the left frontal lobe that directs the muscle movement involved in speech then wernick area an area of the left temporal lobe involved in language comprehension and expression the language areas broca expression wernick comprehension and ex reception and then aphasia left hemisphere paul broca invented all these portions this is the region of broca's area suggest a localization technique to examine functions of the brain removal part of the brain and see what effect it has on behavior examine humans who have suffered brain damage next stimulate the brain then record brain activity next brain lateralization our divided brains corpus callosum large bundle of neural fibers myelinated axons or white matter connecting the two hemisphere 
hemisphere specialization left symbolic thinking language detail lab, lab, literal meaning right portion spatial perception overall picture context metaphor and left visual cortex right visual cortex optic nerve speech optic chiasma then visual area of left hemisphere corpus callosum visual area of right hemisphere contralateral division of labor right hemisphere controls left side of body and visual field left hemisphere controls right side of body and visual field left hemisphere control right side of the body and visual field and split the brain patients so epileptic patients had corpus callosum cut to reduce seizures in the brain large um, lives large unaffected seizures reduced affected abilities related to naming objects in the left visual field then brain plasticity the ability of the brain to recognize neural pathways based on new experience persistent functional changes in the brain respect new knowledge uh, represent new knowledge age dependent component and brain injuries the neuronal influences to neuroplasticity sensation and perception the process by which the central nervous system receives inputs from the environment via sensory neurons bottom up processing then perception the process by which the brain interprets and organizes sensory information top down processing then the psycho physics of sensation absolute threshold the minimum stimulation needed to detect a stimulus with 50% accuracy then sublimit minimal subliminal stimulation below the absolute threshold for conscious awareness may affect behavior without conscious awareness then sensory adaptation or habituation diminished sensitivity to an unchanged stimulus then the five major areas vision electromagnetic occipital lobe hearing mechanical temporal lobe touch mechanical then sensory cortex taste mechanical gustatory insular cortex smell chemical olfactory bulb orbito frontal cortex vomero nasal organ frontal lobe touch parietal lobe dorsal ver stream ventral what stream smell temporal lobe taste hearing occipital lobe and vision and the sixth sense and the seventh and eighth and ninth vestibular balance and motion inner ear proprioceptive relative position of body parts parietal lobe temperature and heat thermoreceptors throughout the body sensory cortex nociception and pain nociceptors throughout the body sensory cortex threshold of five major senses approximate minimum stimulus for each sense vision a candle flame seen at 30 miles on a dark clear night hearing the tick of a clock at 20 feet under quiet conditions taste one teaspoon of sugar in two gallons of water smell one drop of perfume diffused into the entire volume of six rooms touch the wing of a fly falling on your cheek from a distance of 1 cm then the retina the retina of the back of the eye is actually part of the brain the retina at the back of the eye is actually part of the brain so roots brightness coats color vision functions communication coordination control cognition and complexity methods of studying the brain single cell and population recordings animal studies surgical patient studies stimulation animal studies surgical patient studies damage animal lesions human injury human surgical lesions and neuroimaging electroencephalogram eeg recording electrodes are placed on the surface of the scalp and record or amplify the electrical signal given off by the brain then the event related potentials or erps are used to study how the brain responds to different stimuli or events 
CT scan, MRI scan, how brain looks, you could see. And then functional magnetic resonance image, imaging or fMRI features changing changes the measures changes in blood oxygen level dependent bolt activation areas of the brain that are engaged more in a task require oxygen rich blood results show a very small but highly significant percent changes in bolt activation the entire brain is active all the time then connectivity measures functional connectivity using resting state fMRI data to chart cortical regions with temporal synchrony correlation of activation patterns then structural connectivity measures the movement of water molecules to chart the white matter tracks visualizing anatomy then diffusion tensor imaging diffusion spectrum image homunculus map of human cortex primary motor projection area homunculus map of human cortex once again What does the homunculus tell us? Localization of motor and sensory function, topographical organization, cortical representation related to function or to mass. Cortical damage. Much of what we know about the cortex comes from studying brain damage. Damage at identifiable sites can produce disorders of planning or social cognition, aphasia, so disorders in action. Agnosias or disorders in perception, then aphasias, disorders of language. So this person we this person we just mentioned was a survivor of this brain injury, which was caused by this insertion of the rod into his head, but that portion was you know removed from his body. But still he remained alive and after this head injury, his personality was radically different personality. His personality changed. He turned a great, um, he turned to be more aggressive. So that indicates how this part of brain is very important cortical damage is very important when cortical region is not there person turns aggressive or what some other changes will be there so this is to a greater extent you know related like when we conduct knockout mice, ex mice experiments in molecular biology we just remove some genes and then study what is happening in with that mice so same is the case with this human this part of his brain just got removed because of that injury. He is still alive, but some problem was there. He would become more aggressive. So, when a skate, an accident happened after the kick, kick, recovery was there, but still months later, no longer that person changed his personality entirely. Before, capable, efficient, best form and well balanced mind. But after that, after the incident of this brain injury, extra vacant, antisocial liar, grossly profane. reflexes the neuron 100 million varied in size shape function function of neuron sending signals in real time it is a signal electrical chemical types are there then writes the nucleus cell body, neural impulse, then axon, nodes of runware, myelin sheath, axon terminals, then generalization, two forces, electrical, chemical, 
give rise to steady state voltage resting potential universal in cells. We are measuring that resting potential depolarization. Sodium channels open, depolarization, sodium channels close, depolarization, refractory period, excitation, threshold, etc. can be seen. And action potential. Moment of the signal, how is this happening? Then depolarization and depolarization. Cell action speed. Muller, Helmholtz. Then refractoriness. Then all of non low coding of intensity and log plus digital recruitment. Then organizing principle. Neural communication propagation is much faster if the axon is myelinated. Propagation is much faster if the axon is myelinated. Depolarization proceeds down the axon by a number of skip, skips or jumps. The action potential obeys the all or none low. It is, once it is launched, further increase in stimulus intensity have no effect on its magnitude. Then neuron communication propagation is much faster if the axon is myelinated. We just mentioned all this. Then threshold intensity. Synapsis. What happens when signal reaches end of neuron? Two types of actions. Excitatory or inhibitory. Chemical model with multiple or functionally different neurotransmitters. Then temporal and spatial summation. Some other aspects. Scientific method. What kind of signal do neurons use to communicate? Electrical, mechanical or chemical. So if the signal from the vagus nerve to the heart is either electrical or mechanical, then activity of this nerve and the sending of the signal won't affect the fluid surrounding the heart. But if the signal is chemical, some of the signaling substances might diffuse into the blood or fluid. So, Louis placed two still beating frog hearts with vagus nerve attached into jars of saline solution A and B. With an electrode, he stimulated the vagus nerve of the heart in jar A to slow its beating, stimulating electrode. To see whether jar A's fluid will contain traces of a chemical si signal from the nerve, he transferred a sample of jar A's fluid into jar B. He observed its effect on the second heart fluid from jar A. The heart in jar B beats lower when he adds fluid from jar A to its vaping solution. The vagus nerve sends chemical signals to the heart. And synapsis axon of first neuron, then synaptic knob, synaptic vesicle, synaptic cleft, dendrite or cell body receptor site of second neuron. Release of neurotransmitters, presynaptic membrane, postsynaptic membrane, vesicles, synaptic cleft, neurotransmitter substance and receptor. Neuron A, neuron B, axon, synaptic vesicle, synaptic gap, presynaptic membrane, postsynaptic membrane, receptor site, dendrite, postsynaptic membrane, axon, neurotransmitter, synaptic vesicles, receptor site, some action is there, then neurotransmitters are attached to into that receptor. Synaptic transmitter molecule, receptor molecule, transmitter receptor complex, synaptic transmitter molecule, synaptic cleft and membrane. A model for building behavior out of simple building blocks and reflexes voting behavior mirror neurons other examples to follow reflexes a model 